What's up, Scoop Podcast? I'm your host, Erica Krupen, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with John from Potty Pickers Pet Waste Removal Business. What's up, John? Not too much. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for, for hopping on and thank you for reaching out to me. I'm super stoked to chat with you. Um, I got a lot of questions to ask you, so hopefully you're ready to chit chat, you know? Definitely, definitely. I'm ready. All right, well, give the audience and give me a little a little light intro. We already know your name. We know your business name. Anything anything extra we should know? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, you pretty much nailed it. Uh, the business is Potty Pickers, but I grow, I've grown up in the Chicagoland area. I've kind of hit, like, every tier, I feel like, of the Chicagoland suburbs from the more rural, you know, hour and a half is where I grew up as a kid, and then into the suburbs. I've lived in the city, and so now I'm just a little bit back out into the suburbs again. Uh, just got married of July last year. Uh, Congratulations. So thank you. That's kind of why I started this whole little business was to save money for that, which was a terrible idea because it takes a while to start making money. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, that's, that's really like, I have two dogs, no kids, but you know, that's, uh, that's where we're at. Are you, since you lived in the city, of like Chicagoland. Are you an aggressive driver? Do you have road rage? Uh, I like to think I'm not. Uh, <laughs> what like would your wife say? What would your wife say? I think she would say I'm an okay driver. She hates <laughs> driving. She didn't get her license until she was 22. So, yeah. um, and I'm 32 and she's, uh, she's 31 now. Uh, so I don't know. I think she likes it when I drive better, but, uh, it did make me a tad more aggressive. I guess I will say. Yeah. But, my husband says I park like shit. It's like, you <laughs> park like shit all the time. I'm like, you drive, you drive then. <laughs> yep. I've had that conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. All right, cool, cool. All right. Well, before we hop into like the business stuff, uh, let's just talk a little bit personal. Just take a stroll down memory lane. So we were all children once upon a time. Tell us what's one of your favorite childhood memories. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that comes into my head, I'd have to say is probably, uh, like I said, I grew up in a smaller town, uh, until I went to high school. So I guess my favorite childhood memory was just like skateboarding with friends. Yeah. It was a small enough town, you know, where you could just kind of, you could see all of your friends in walking distance. It was no problem. Uh, you didn't really have to drive anywhere to get anywhere. You know, everything was available by skateboard or bike at the time. So it was fun. You'd always just meet up with people in different places and and hang out for the day. That's cool. Do you still uh, try to skateboard? I think I, I finally hung it up <laughs> in the yeah. last year or two, especially, you know, with this kind of a job and, you know, with other things that I do, uh, getting hurt has, it's, it's higher stakes now. <laughs> For sure. When my husband is out with the kids doing BMX tricks, I get so nervous. I'm like, listen, you're worth too much. I cannot have you have a broken arm right now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I, I honestly worry about that because a friend of mine, maybe like six months ago was like, took a picture of his skateboard. And he's like, let's go back out. Let's go and do it. And I was like, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, I don't have Aflac set up. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks for sharing that. So yeah. what is one of the best uh, compliments you've gotten, either a personal compliment or a professional compliment? I, I guess it's a little bit of both. I've been told I'm easy to work with. Yeah, so I'm, I tend to get along with most people, which is nice. Uh, a friend of mine told me a while back that uh, he liked it that when I thought something was a good idea, I just kind of go for it. That was uh, that was very nice of him. And I, I appreciated that for sure, especially, you know, getting into business and stuff like that. It's always nice to to hear that. I don't know that you're you're willing to go for things. Absolutely. And to have that type of compliment come from like your inner circle, because I know a lot of us business owners, we've experienced that our main supporters, um, they they are our friends and family, but they're not, you know, they're mm -hmm. ones, I don't know, it's weird. Like for me, uh, most of my supporters are people that I didn't even like, I didn't know on a personal level. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting. It was an interesting experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you, you're married. You have two dogs, you have no kids. So, and as a business owner, what does your morning routine look like? My whole work day is pretty chaotic. Um, so I also work for my family's business in directional boring. <clears throat> so we put like uh, cable lines in the ground for Comcast and other telecommunications companies. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm a project manager of that company still. 
Uh, so in the meantime, while I'm scooping, if an emergency comes up, you know, if we if we hit a power line to a restaurant or something or you know, something crazy like that happens or, you know, a machine breaks down or, you know, something happened to one of the employees in the field, you know, I have to immediately pretty much just pick up the scooper, you know, finish the yard I'm in, obviously, but, yeah. you know, get in the truck and, you know, take the magnets off the truck and then I'm headed to the, uh, the construction site and, and live in a second life, basically. Yeah, you're taking off your scooper hat. You're putting on your project manager hat. Mm -hmm. It's time yeah, to get so, to it. But yeah, um, I mean, what's well, good? It's good because the the pooper scooper business allows the flexibility, so you're able to do both, which is nice. Yeah, definitely, and that and that's one of the reasons why I can't really like lock down times for people or anything like yeah. that. I know sometimes they're like, "What time are you coming?" And I'm like, oh, "That's a good question." Uh, <laughs> I'll get there. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you a text message when I'm on the way. Um, yeah. a, good, a good way to dance around that is I say, uh, which I learned this from Jessica over in Canada, uh, either like AM or a PM or an afternoon, like an AM scoop yeah. or an afternoon scoop. Um, yeah, be like, well, yeah. And, and, and if anybody wants a specific time, I just tell them, like, I can't guarantee that there's far too many variables. Yeah, definitely. And I always tell them, you know, yeah. I'll send text between five and 30 minutes when we're on the yeah. way and all of that. And, you know, every once in a while, somebody's like, oh, can you, you know, they'll keep pressing you for a time. And like you said, you kind of just have to stick to it that um, you can't really make that happen. So. Yeah, you, you got to put your scooper down. Yeah, so, hey, <laughs> I'll get there when I get there. <laughs> all right, cool. So let's go all the way back to when you started your business. What was your first scoop like? Yeah. So my first scoop actually was not bad at all. Um, I know there's horror stories of people with like small dogs and, you know, you pick up a million little pieces of poop all over their yard and it takes you forever. But yeah, we had two small dogs, but the yard was pretty tiny. Um, you know, I was excited. I will say I went with like a little, like, I didn't go with the big yellow bucket. Let's just say that I went with the, uh, uh, just a little pan. <laughs> amateur. <laughs> yep. That was definitely, it was amateur hour. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I remember, I remember the lady called and, or I called her after she had submitted online and I had said, well, she was like, oh, well, do you have automatic payments? Um, and I was like, um, yeah, kinda, <laughs> I think. So it was just, it was kind of a shit show, but we got there. She still sends me a check because I didn't have a good answer for her. And she's the only person. Um, well, there's a couple people who send me checks still, but, um, yeah, I've definitely gotten to the automated card payment with most people. Absolutely. And you, you, you don't know what you don't know. And it takes time. Um, I didn't have auto pay when I first started either. It was check cash Venmo, wow. which is how, you know, however they wanted to pay me. They, I mobile deposit wasn't really a big deal. Like five years ago, the, the bank that I was using did not have mobile deposit on their app until recently. <laughs> so you were going in there with just a pile of checks. Like I would like to just deposit all these, please. I had customers be, they were mad at me. They're like, Hey, it's been two weeks. You haven't deposited the check yet. I'm like, Oh yeah, I got to do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about, but it's just like, I, it was out of sight, out of mind for me. I mean, it's a huge time saver. The mobile deposit. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like you have automated deposit, you know, yeah. in regards. So yeah, for sure. So when was that first scoop? When did you start your business? Uh, so I officially, I think I got my EIN and all of that taken care of in like May of 2022, but I don't think I actually got my first customer until June of that I year. How did you get that customer? Where did the lead uh, come from? It was Google ads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was a little shy to, to ask my network about, oh, do you want me to come do this in your yard? And right. you know, when I first started the business, like I said, I worked for a family business. So I didn't really tell them exactly that I was doing um, both. I was just being really, I was just managing my time pretty well, um, which, you know, eventually after you get so many customers, it doesn't matter how well you manage your time. They're going to find out that you're... Um, you know, living that double career life, but <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I got them from Google ads though. And, um, yeah, that's where most of my customers have come from still is from Google ads. Nice. I, I get a lot of leads from Google for sure. How long did it take you to get Google verified? Did it take you a while? Uh, I don't remember. It felt like it was only, 
I, I can't remember exactly, but it doesn't feel like it was very long, maybe a couple of weeks or something. I, I can't really remember. Yeah. Cause I was just uh, chit chatting with um, like a subscriber in the DMS on Instagram. And she was telling me that she's been having the hardest time getting Google verified. Yeah. And, and she was like, Hey, one of your videos actually helped me go through the process. You should probably like, you should remake it, make an updated video. I'm like, Oh, that's actually probably a good idea. I should do that. Yeah. But, but I haven't done that stuff in so long that yeah, I'm you're, happy. you're almost, yeah. you you just have to, you need to make like a little mock company or something and just be yeah. like, oh, start to finish. This is how, uh, this is how it's done. That's a good idea. I actually just filed for another LLC because my social media is it's growing. Right. So I actually filed for a, a company for my social media recently. Um, yeah. so that's a good idea. I should do that on Google. Yeah, Thank exciting. you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, make it legit, make it legit. Uh, <laughs> so, um, about your business name, what made you choose that name? Uh, I just like alliterations. I don't, <laughs> I just really like the, the two P's. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think, I think it was more, I just wanted to get it started. Uh, I thought of the name and I was like, okay, the name isn't going to be that important. I mean, it is and it isn't, you know, it would be, it would probably have been better if I had somehow gotten like scooper or something in there. But I mean, I think it, it does the, the trick, but um, yeah, I really just, I thought of the name and didn't put a lot of thought into it. And I just wanted to get the business up and running. I like the name. It's a cute name. Oh, well, thank you. Do you uh, do you get people calling you from Google that need plumbing work done? <laughs> Has that happened yet? No, but I have been telling people that I'm basically like a plumber for dogs. Uh, <laughs> and so I think, um, yeah, it hasn't caught on yet, but <laughs> it's, oh. eh, it's over people's head. When I tell people and people are like, oh, how's business going? I say it's really picking up. Yeah. And sometimes people are like, Oh, okay. And then other people are like, I see what you did there. Yeah. It's, it's hit or miss, you know? Yeah. The, the scoop jokes, sometimes they, they only belong in the, in the group. I know They're, our group is the only ones that appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So what does your business look like today? Yeah. So it's grown quite a bit since that first customer. Um, now it's at just over 50, I think like 53 recurring customers. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's gone really well. Um, uh, you know, I, I had told you in a brief discussion, you know, a, a little while ago, you helped me a little, uh, your YouTube channel definitely helped out. So at the beginning stages, and I definitely appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, it's grown to about 53 customers and yeah, we're in May now. So I don't remember exactly what day I filed for the EIN, but, um, the birthday is here in May. So. Oh, year. happy early birthday. Yeah, well, yeah, Yay. and then just the one commercial account, um, which it's not like a contracted account, I guess, at this point, it seems like it could build into something. So we've done one clean for them now, but they have three properties in the area. And the one that we cleaned was like a 51 acre property. So it was a really big. Wow. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you follow up questions? Sure. Was yeah. it how many people cleaned it? Uh, two of us. And how long did it take? We started um, at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and my friend just helped me out. So he showed up. It was on a, a Saturday morning. So he showed up a little um, under the weather due to his own, <laughs> <laughs> his own doing. Um, yeah. And uh, But anyway, so we got started around 8. And I think we finished up at about like 3.30 or 4-ish in the afternoon. Okay. That was a solid. That was a solid clean. So how much waste did you pull out? You know, I don't even know. They had dumpsters all over the property. And I was trying to figure that out too. My wife asked me, she's like, oh, how many bags? You know, because I usually come home and I'll be like, oh, this is how much we grabbed from this one yard. But there was yeah. so many dumpsters all over the place that we were kind of just filling them and then just throw them in. So Yeah. And there, it, it's such a large property too, that it's like, it took so long because of the space you had to travel. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I looked at my step count at the end of the day and I think I had... I had 37,000 and my friend had, uh, who helped me out had 32,000. So between the two of us that day. <laughs> That's a lot of steps. Now, can we talk numbers? Do you what? want to talk about what you charged? How much did you charge for that? See, I don't know if I charged very well at all, but uh, it happens. 
So I did charge a thousand dollars was for the clean, which I feels, think that sounds pretty good. I I mean I don't know. You know, there's always so much debate about yeah stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm always like, you know, the hourly rate worked out pretty okay. Right. Um, you know, it, it was fine. You know, it was probably a little lower than you know. I see some people going after commercial, but it was higher than my residential. Mm-hmm great um you know which I don't have exact numbers on but I know it was higher than that so I was okay with it I mean either way you know it was a solid Saturday's day worth of work you know a Saturday's worth of work this is like your side hustle and a thousand dollars scooping dog poop yeah no it was nice it was fun uh well it wasn't fun it was actually terrible how much walking it was but it was uh once it was done it was really satisfying that's cool. That's cool. Um, if you don't mind me asking, so with your weeklies, do you know do you know about what your average ticket price is? For weekly, so mm-hmm. right now, I mean our prices are on our website, so I don't really mind saying. Okay, cool. Uh, so it's seventy nine dollars a month for weekly. As okay. Well. And that's is, uh, is it um is that like a flat rate for like one dog, two dog, three dog? No, no, it? it's ten dollars additional for okay. for each dog after the first. Okay, cool. Because, you know, people that listen to this that are just getting started, you know, pricing is one of the most difficult, um, difficult things. And since I've started, because this is becoming a a much more well known industry, our prices are able to get higher and higher. And I love it. I, I do. And I, I, I hate when I hear people coming in and they're like, well, I, I feel like I should just charge $10 a scoop. And I don't know if this is like right to say, but I'm like, that's crackhead prices. You can't, you can't do that. You can't yeah, charge always, $10 a scoop. I totally, agree. I mean, I always think about it. I'm like, you're going, I mean, you're going to someone's house, regardless yeah. of what you're doing. You're going to someone's house for $10. You're going to make you, if you have a twice weekly customer, you, you know, you got to go to that house eight to 10 times right. a month. You know, you're, you're really shorting yourself yeah. on that. And I mean, I definitely feel like, you know, there are some, I suppose, like, probably some market penetration. Like if you're a new business, you have to start getting customers. So maybe yeah. that is, but I feel like there's probably just as much advantage to your prices being the lowest and your prices being the highest, you know, because people in higher prices are going to see value. And also when you charge more money, you can provide more value because you could spend more time in that yard. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you start to hire, you can pay more. And then obviously you're going to attract better candidates when you're able to provide that type of stuff for sure. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So with you balancing both, right, your other job and then your poop scooping, what's a like productivity hack that you have that helps you do this? I mean, exact hacks. I don't know. I mean, different leverage your time. Um, Try to, I mean, if you can get somebody to help you out, I mean, that's leverage. I mean, I use jobber like you, I know some people use sweep and go, but I would even advise for most people, even early on, that a CRM is super important. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's, you know, I think I got Jobber when I had about maybe five to 10 customers. And I'm so, so smart. Happy. I, I'm so happy I started sooner rather than later because everything is organized now. I have all of the information in one place. So. And that is so valuable. I switched over. I want to say at 50 customers, it was a nightmare. It took me three months to fix the errors that I made when I was moving everybody over. Yeah. Well, the people, everybody in the community, it helped me make that decision. Cause I was like, I kept seeing stories of like, Oh my God, I have to do like 90 customers. Yeah. And, I to, and I was like, Oh, I only have like six. <laughs> Might as well do it now. You made the right decision for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Definitely. So becoming an entrepreneur and doing this business, how has it changed you? So I was always working for a family business. So I've kind of had like a, an education in small business for a long time uh, for, you know, that business has been around for 20 years. So I kind of always knew that I wanted to open my own business. So I think doing it has been just important. It's given me a little bit of my own sense of self of like, oh, okay, I don't just need, you know, to ride the coattails of somebody else's thing. I'm also very capable of doing it. Um, And this business in particular, I think the cool thing is that once you've learned how to run this business, in my opinion, you're capable of running any consumer service business. Yeah. You know, you, 
you can you want to do window washing or lawn care or litter pickup or uh, I, you know there's a million of them but you could pretty much do it all at that point as long as you learn the skill is this your first business that you've started the first successful one <laughs> so you've done others do you want to do you want to talk about those a little bit yeah sure so at once upon a time i made a bunch of meme pages starting in college and uh of all my a bunch of my favorite tv shows like nice. like workaholics it's always sunny in philadelphia and so once upon a time they all had accumulated like some hundreds of thousands of likes on them or follows or whatever so i thought okay and then i started making groups on facebook but the problem is with the content of those shows a lot a lot of stuff was getting flagged because mm. be, oh you know that's questionable humor you know or something like that with inside the groups not on the meme pages ultimately got them shut down uh so i was like okay well maybe i'm gonna make this other group on my own so I basically did that and I made a website that was basically a Facebook group. Not the best idea ever because um, trying. Facebook's so strict. Yeah. And I mean, basically trying to run your own little social network is very time consuming and challenging. And um, I definitely don't recommend it. <laughs> so do you make memes for uh, the pooper scooper industry yet? I mean, I a couple. I've. Uh, not not too much no I mean I haven't I've been more just in the work and yeah so um James Shields from Derby Sir, Derby City Poop Scoops he actually has a meme page on Facebook that's for pooper scoopers you should check yeah. it out and he's always asking for people to like you know add stuff to it so if you ever do get back into it since you have that skill that'd be cool yeah. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, I appreciate it all right um so you seem do you, do you like listen to podcasts and read books and stuff like uh, yeah. self-development definitely watch a lot of yes youtube and uh podcasts yeah definitely so what are you listening to in your spare time as far as probably my number one and i don't know if you're probably familiar with him he's kind of big now but uh i do watch a lot of like alex hermosi love it i was just reading his uh, million dollar offer book for the yeah. second time mm -hmm. yeah definitely i I mean, I always say that I read books, but I really just listen to them when yeah. I'm driving. So, but, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I listen to that. Um, I like to watch a lot of his content and then he has a podcast that's on Spotify. I um, also really like uh, the iced, I think it's called the iced coffee hour. Graham uh, Stephan. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of any others. Oh, I, I know there's another one. Diary of a CEO. Are you familiar with that one? It's like an English guy as the host. No, let me, let me jot that one down. I have been, so there's not a lot of fem like female entrepreneurs that I can like relate to. So Charlene Johnson, she used to sell Turbo Jam back in the day. Like she was a consumer's fitness person. Yeah. Uh, back when I was in like my late teens, early twenties. Well, she's no longer doing consumer fitness and now she's doing social media stuff. So I've been binge watching and listening to all of her YouTube stuff and podcast stuff. Um, who, and I'm sorry, who was that? Charlene Johnson. Charlene Johnson. Okay. Yeah. And, she, and she has her son, Brock Johnson. He's on Instagram and he's like, he shares his Instagram uh, strategies, how he's posting and how to, you know, um, leverage all of that stuff. It's been good. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I'm definitely going to listen to that. I'm always, because half the time, you know, the algorithm just takes over and you're, yeah. You're watching the same things over and over and over, it feels like. So it's always nice to to break out of the loop. Yeah. And then what book have I been? Um, the One Thing. The That one's a good book. The One Thing? Okay. Yeah. Because my, I'm like super ADD. I'm all over the place. Like I was on Ritalin when I was a kid. I didn't take it like I should have, all the things. Um, And so I'm like, I just need to take a deep breath. <laughs> and focus on the one thing. And I, I was thinking, I just need to focus. I need to focus. My phone read my brain because this book popped up as a recommendation. Yeah. Hey, and uh, so have you uh, implemented it at all? Have you seen it uh, come to life at all? Focusing, because I'm assuming it's all about just focusing on just one thing at a time. So. Yeah, just kind of like narrowing it down, figuring out what's, you know, what's important at that moment and not just trying to do a bunch of stuff like half, but because you can't, you can't do thing. You can't do a bunch of things at once and have them be 
have them be great. So um, yeah. even with my social media stuff, I was trying to do TikTok and I'm trying, I got the podcast, I got the YouTube and, and my YouTube and my TikTok were like nothing. I was doing nothing on it because I was so focused on the podcast, but I was like, okay, if I record, right, record while I'm recording the podcast and I can slice that up, then I'm able to put that stuff onto the other socials. So that's, yeah. that's how I'm focusing uh, the one thing for my social media stuff. As for the business, I'm really focusing on hiring yeah. because I need to leverage my time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw I listened to your last podcast, um, and I know one of your scoopers has been out with a uh, with an illness. So yeah, sorry to hear that. I hope she's doing better. She is. Yeah. She's doing much better. But yeah, that was that was tough. It was tough for her. It was tough for me. Um, I was not only very worried about her because she was so sick, but financially, I mean it. Ooh, that sucked. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can, I, I can imagine that would come with serious problems, especially in this business where you know, you might only have one or two employees or something like that. So one goes down is just like you know, it's crippling a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and she's my primary scooper, which made me think about you know having some wiggle room and having maybe a floater or somebody to uh, step in because. I like, I can't do it all. We're at the point now where there's just too many houses. There's too yeah. much going on. There's too many phone calls and questions for me to be out in the field and still trying to navigate um, issues that come in because right. I'm, I'm in a backyard and I'm, I'm on my phone. Cause my phone is constantly going off and I don't want, I do not want a homeowner to look outside and see me texting in a backyard. That, yeah. is, that is not the look I want. Yeah, no, I mean, and it, it always sucks because, you know, you're like, you almost want to put like a sign on your back to be like, I'm working on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the owner. I got to answer these calls. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I'm still trying. <laughs> I know, but I'll never like, can like walk and, and look at my phone if I have to stop because my phone will read off the messages to me when my earbuds in my ear and it'll tell me like this happened or and if it's an emergency, I'll answer it like right away and, and send a message. But yeah, I try, I try not to, cause how would you feel right? If you're, you oh, know, yeah. you're yeah. paying somebody and you look in your backyard and they're like, you think they're scrolling on Facebook or TikTok? Oh, well, right. And the problem too is when they notice you doing that, that's probably gonna be the same customer that walks out into the yard and will find anything you missed and just be like, well, it was because they were on their phone. You know? Yeah. And then the yard takes me longer than it should. So yep. I'm not like the fastest scooper anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I feel like I'm, I'm not either. And I, I haven't even been doing it that long. So, um, but everybody has their own pace. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. All right. So I know that you're still pretty new in business, um, but you've been doing it for almost a year. So you got some time under your belt. Uh, what would you give, what, what type of advice would you give to somebody that is brand new, just starting out? I would probably say, uh, just go for it. Uh, yeah. Just get started. Just do something. Um, you know, I think when you open a business, a lot of people, I think get really scared of opening a business because they're afraid of all the things they have to do. Mm -hmm. Like at any given time, there's only one thing that you can do. Right. And that's if you just focus on, you know, get your EIN. Okay. That's a day. Open a bank account. Okay. That's a day, you know, or 10 minutes even, you know, open a credit card, buy a, you know, you could do, you could break all those things into 14 days and then you're up and running with everything you need. So I would say, yeah, definitely just. Just go for it. And also, I think that not worrying about what the bigger businesses around you are doing and right. take advantage of being the smaller business and see the advantages that that gives you. I'm glad you said that because that's something that I really leaned into when I first started was brand new business owner. And, and when there would be an issue that would happen, I would thank them for allowing me to fix it so I can be a better, a better business owner um, next time. And mm -hmm. people, people really like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause they want to support the little guys. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, some people, I mean, I, I fell into this trap too, where when I would send an email, uh, I would, I would speak as if there were other people, right. Yeah. The it was just, yeah. It was just me. And um, I finally stopped doing that. Cause I felt like a phony. I just felt like a phony. And I mean, I that's a good tip for me. Cause I think I do the same thing. There's so yeah. many we are like this. And then eventually once they get to know me, I'm like, Oh, I'm the only guy here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, 
before we hopped on, I was doing a little bit of, I don't know, I was like not stalking your social media, but I was checking it out. You seem pretty active on social. Yeah, I mean, I try to stay a little active on Facebook. I'm very new uh, to Instagram. I'm, you know, I, I was definitely one of those guys who just was like, yeah, Facebook's fine for me. I'm good. <laughs> But uh, so I did start uh, a Potty Vickers Instagram. So that's pretty much brand new. Um, started a LinkedIn. I talked to somebody a while back and they were like, oh, these are the these are the main ones that you need to be on for, you know, SEO purposes and stuff like that, too. So Yeah, especially if you want to start uh, getting more commercial properties, LinkedIn is the way to go. Yeah. yeah I'm slacking. I'm slacking on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn profile is it's pitiful. Don't look it up. <laughs> The personal one or the business one? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't even know what I have. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go look. Yeah. I'll, I'll jot that down too. I'm like, I got a list of homework to do after we get off of this. Um, <laughs> so on, on socials, is it potty pickers all the way across on all socials? Yeah, so on Facebook, it's potty pickers, dog waste removal. And then everywhere else on Instagram and LinkedIn, you could find it uh, potty pickers or of course, uh, you can just look up John Travis. I'm always happy to talk business or um, potty picking with somebody. So all the questions that I sent to you, we we moved through these questions very quickly, which <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's only been 35 minutes. Can I ask you some more questions? Is that okay? Definitely. Yeah. So what are like, what's been your favorite part of this business? Uh, definitely just, own, just owning something. Um, you know, I don't think I'm necessarily in love with uh, picking up poop, which I yeah. think people can probably relate. Um, but I do love business um, in general. I think that's kind of what I really like. Um, so I'm always interested to watch something or uh, or talk with somebody about that. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if I answered the question exactly there, but. Um, no, you're, in, you're into like the business side of it. I'm, I imagine you're probably into your analytics, really, really looking at your reports and jobber. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I try to be, you know what I mean? I, yeah. you know, definitely there are things that I definitely want to pick up on. Like I want to pick up on more like the marketing numbers and, you know, mm -hmm. what are exact acquisition costs and stuff like that. And I think that's how you can grow really, um, in a really strong way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think that this is kind of a stepping stone for you and you'll open up another business? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I don't know that I'll, you know, necessarily stop this one um, or anything like that, but I don't think this is the the final stop by any means. And I'm sure you can relate to that. Yeah. I, my husband and I were talking about that because, you know, with this business, I love it. I've grown it. And like you said, with this business, you learn the fundamental, the fundamentals and you're like, okay, I did this. I'm doing mm -hmm. all of this stuff. What else? What yeah. else is out there? And the options are really endless. Yeah. And I think this is like, like I said, that like service business tier is like kind of exactly that. And you kind of realize how much you can leverage a business like this or not, you know, you know, how many, you know, one person can only do so much and uh, five more employees can only do so much. So yeah. you're always kind of looking for another opportunity where you can leverage your time that instead of five Xing with five employees, maybe you can 100 X with the same five employees. And that's what you really want to go for. Are you planning on hiring soon? Yes, uh, I hope so. <laughs> now, have you hired before with being a project manager? Yeah, I mean, we've hired people for sure. Um, and a lot of that's come through word of mouth, uh, just with the industry that we're in. And, you know, that business, you know, at any given time has like 10 to 15 employees. A lot of times those people will know other people who are in the industry and they come through that, um, which this is very different from that. You know, I'll have to start using Indeed a little bit more and, and figuring that side out. But I think I'm going to try and find somebody part time. Are you going to supply a vehicle, you think, or have them drive their own? Um, I'm between that all the time because mm -hmm. there's the debate of do you haul it off or not, which I offer it um, for extra. And I've noticed since I've been doing that and the way I word it on the job reform is a lot of people are opting to not have it hauled away when they find out that there is going to be a an extra fee. So, so let me tell you, let me tell you about that today. Uh, I get a text or I get a phone call. So I have a virtual assistant now. So I haven't really been answering my phone because I got the VA to do that. Well, I seen this number come through not once, not twice, but three times. And I was like, why is this number not being picked up? 
um, which I still need to follow up on that, but I answered it and it was a customer asking if my scooper had come yesterday. Mm -hmm. I looked it up and I was like, well, why do you think that he didn't uh, show up? She's like, well, I don't, I don't see the bag in the trash can. The homeowners are going to look for that trash bag. Yeah. They want to see that bag. So I talked to the scooper. He's like, yeah, I scooped, I put the bag in there. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to come and re-scoop the yard. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to scan it. I get there. It's a big yard. I was like, first of all, she's underpriced. So I got to fix that. And (laughs) let me just go look in the trash can. The, the bag (laughs) was literally in there. It was sitting on top. There was three things. There was a a burger, like a Burger King bag, something else, I believe. And then my bag sitting right on top of it. Yeah. So she opened the can and just didn't see anything and just decided. She, she was like, Oh, I just, I thought that was a grocery bag. Yeah. So I sent her a picture of it and I explained to her that those bags are thin liners. We use those because they're cheaper than double bagging with the other bag. But I left there and I was just, I was kind of irritated because this isn't the first time this has happened. And I feel bad with him. It's just with him. It's just with him. And, and we kind of talked about it and he's like, is this happening with anybody else? I'm like, no. So I had to have that pep talk with him and say, you know, it's not that people don't like you. I think you're just, he's so quiet. He's so yeah. quiet. And me and Crystal, when we're back in yards, we're banging our buckets. Like we are so loud. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I, love the, I always think about that. I'm like, am I being annoying right now? I'm like slapping the poop off of the scoop. <laughs> yeah, I were super loud. So that, yeah, that happened. And I, I just, that's one thing that I didn't really think of when we started to not haul was people checking the trash cans for that bag. Yeah. And you, you would think that they could probably just say, Oh, maybe they took it. I'm going to go look in the yard real quick. You know, it almost seems like the same amount of time to send you a text or an email as it would for them to take a couple steps out into the yard and just say, Oh, there it is. Oh, yep. It's clean. So you'd think so, but that's kind of the stuff that's like, it's a little irritating, but also as like a consumer, I get it. I'm like, I, I totally understand it. You're always kind of a, a little on edge with, you know, service businesses. Cause you're like, are they doing a good job? Are they, you know, should I be on top of them a little bit? And and yeah, and that's what sucks too, right? So if they've never used a scooping service before, and especially a scooping service that does a good job, they show up, they're so used to being burned by other industries. And then when we come in and we're providing this excellent service, we have the CRM, we can collect the payments. They 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 almost don't even know what to think. They're like, right. why, are they, why are they so good to us? I, I have to say, I always think that, you know, I always think about, it, I'm like, man, this industry is kind of like shockingly got it together with you know, uh, communication and stuff yeah. like that, you know, and I think a lot of that has to do with the group and everybody kind of coming together. And, you know, there's almost like, it almost makes like a standard for the entire, yes. you know, absolutely. There is a standard and there's not a lot of us and we all, we, we talk, right. So because there isn't a lot of us, if, if there's a complaint or there's an issue, like we're going to know about it. Like we know about the company, um, that's doing a bad job. Yeah, because we're we're such a small industry, right. and I was gonna say one or one other thing um, about the communication. Why we're so good at it? I don't know. I'm gonna have to circle back to that. It's, yeah. it just slipped my mind. Yeah, I mean, definitely jobber and you know sweep and go or whatever people are using helps big time. I mean, you know, it's so much easier to send. Uh, it, it's so much easier to send an email or a text or something because you can do it all from one spot. So. Yeah. Oh, I remember what it is. Uh, the dogs. I think a lot of us communicate oh, because yeah. we're, we're afraid of the dogs getting let out on us. Yeah, I don't want to get bit. <laughs> exactly. Um, have you, I don't want to jinx you or anything, but has there been any? I've been nipped. Not, yeah. I, not no, no skin break or anything like that. And every situation um, that has either been that situation, I was in the way back of the yard and there's like a garage, you know, like there's a grass spot behind the garage, a detached yeah. And so I, they couldn't see me back there. And I'd sent the text and everything like that. And it was a little dog, luckily. And it was just like, <laughs> it probably nipped me like seven times on my walk out of the yard. I was like, and the lady came over and she was like, oh, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I just didn't want to make a big thing out of it, but uh, probably should. It's probably good to uh, um, nip those problems in the butt before yeah. they become bigger problems. Uh, but in that situation, it was a little dog and didn't see it much of a reason. I have a zero tolerance level now. If um one, if anybody gets bit, they automatically get dropped. Yeah. But if a um a homeowner lets the dog out on us and it's not an approved dog, they get talked to one time and one time only. And if it happens again, 
Uh, we, they're definitely getting dropped, but it's also circumstantial. If the dog gets let out and we just don't feel comfortable, I'll drop the homeowner immediately. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the bigger I get here, I think, I think I'll probably take that lead soon because there's just too many situations where yeah. like, there's been a couple dogs that got let out on me where I'm like, this is not a little dog. <laughs> you know, no, it's so scary. Yeah. So. Did you hear my story about the dogs that got the three dogs that got let out on me? The Rottweiler story? Yes, I think I did. I think, yeah. Was it a, you, it was a few podcasts ago, right? Yeah. Where the one dog was humping my leg while the other one was growling at me. It was, a, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you do the walk of shame out of the yard like what i did a, <laughs> i just had my head down like what is this but this is gonna make for great content so i can't wait yeah. to tell the story <laughs> uh, I, I haven't had any real like embarrassing stories or anything crazy like that happen i mean dogs have been let out but you know it's usually just been like oh sorry and you know that's about the extent of it and i just walk out of the yard um, I personally haven't witnessed this, but one of my scoopers has witnessed witness this one elder woman that just does not care about showing her body yeah. and will just be in the back window, just letting it all hang out. Oh, and Crystal, okay. Yeah. Crystal will be like, oh my gosh, I seen it again. <laughs> Wait, so does the lady know that, uh, Crystal, right? I guess yeah. Crystal's there. Yeah. And oh, she knows that she's there and just <laughs> just no shame just does not care i don't i have no yes, idea it's best. <laughs> but part of me is like do i have the conversation about you know being decent when the scooper comes over i don't know yeah i told, I told crystal it's like you just gotta keep your head down girl just keep it down <laughs> yeah it's like a weird gray area it's like you know if she if she was out in the backyard you know naked that i guess that would be definite in the grounds yeah. for that no but in the window it's like <laughs> yeah i try not to look I try not to look in people's windows. I really try not to because I just, I don't know. Just I just don't wanna... day when somebody leaves a review, oh, they were looking in my windows as I was in their backyard. Exactly. And I just don't want no part of that. Yeah. That's for a sure. Review. Well, um, well, we're going to wrap it up here soon. Is there anything that you want to touch on before we close out? I don't think so. No, I mean, uh, I think that that went pretty well. I'm pretty happy with uh, all the questions. And yeah, thanks again for having me. Uh, thank you for hopping on this, this podcast and just doing the social media in general has been, I mean, it's been great for me. I like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have never have met if I didn't do the social media and it wasn't poop scooping. So yeah. I love, I love this community. Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure for you, you know, the podcast and the social media brings you all sorts of opportunities and I'm sure it's going to continue to do so and you seem to be very uh diligent with it all and doing a good job so yeah i enjoy it too i'm trying to are you going to go to the pooper scooper uh convention in what is it september i'm gonna try i haven't yeah. officially made any plans to go um yeah. but uh, I, I i would like to go i think it'd be fun i think it'd be fun to meet a lot of the people you know like you kind of said you know just meeting everybody and talking with them and you know putting uh faces to the names, you know, would be a lot of fun. So uh, that's, I mean, obviously I want to go for like the educational purposes, but I'm just excited to meet everybody face to face that I've talked yeah. to over the past five years. <laughs> have you, have you been to any of them before? I haven't. No. no. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds like it would be fun. I mean, it would just be a nice vacation either way to go out there. So yeah. Yeah. We're going to stay for an entire week. Yeah. Um, the only other scoopers I've met face to face, well, I know Jamie. So uh he owns uh Turd Burglar. He's here in Michigan and I've known him. Gosh, we used to party together. Like we used to get yeah <laughs> hammered together back in the day. Um, yeah. I know him and then Jessica uh out in Canada. I actually I met her online. Mm -hmm. I reached out to her because there wasn't a lot of girls scooping at the time. I was yeah. like, well, she looks kind of girly. Let, let me just send some yeah. messages. And she was like super standoffish with me. But then she realized I was serious about the business and we became excellent friends. And I was like, I'm going to drive to Canada and go visit her. So I hopped in my truck. I stayed at her house. But on the way there at the border, you know, I had my poop scooping stuff. And they're like, well, what are you going over here for? I was like, I'm going to go hang out with a friend. They're like, well, how do you know this friend? I met her on the internet. How did you meet her on the internet? <laughs> All about a poop scooping business. The guy looked at his like partner person. They're like, pull over. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't buy this. <laughs> yeah, they searched my entire truck. They pulled, like, they popped out the door because it was like an older Colorado. Uh oh. <laughs> and like, looked through everything. Luckily, I mean, I don't have anything in there. Probably yeah, you were fine. Yeah, was... <laughs> yeah, but I was like, mm, okay. So I, I next time I went over there, I had a much much better story. Yeah, yeah, you went. <laughs> <laughs> went over there and, and just got to just got to visit and have fun so yeah didn't didn't go into the whole spiel I knew exactly where she lived I had her address um I made sure to clean my truck out I didn't have all the trash bags back there because uh a messy truck will yeah I want to search you so yeah yeah they were they saw your truck and they're like yeah we're definitely going after you <laughs> right oh yeah for sure for sure all right well this was so cool do you have any questions for me no i don't think so no i think that i think that's pretty good all right i love it we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap this up i want to thank you one last time for chit-chatting with me um for you guys that are listening thank you so much for tuning in new episodes drop on monday so make sure you like subscribe and do all the things and until next time bye Bye. <laughs> that was so good. You did such a good job. My first podcast. Woo-hoo. It was oh, fun. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs>